This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. This is The Ramsey Show. We help people build wealth, do work that they love and has meaning. We help them to create and have actual, real relationships. George Camel, Ramsey personality and host of the Better are the Fine Print Podcast and the Entree Leadership Podcast is my co-host today as we answer your questions about your life and your money. It's a free call at 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Shannon starts off this hour in Carlsbad, New Mexico. Hi, Shannon. How are you? Good. How are you, Dave? Better than I deserve. What's up? Good. So I'm calling because I have a 2019 Suburban that literally broke down on the side of the road in the middle of nowhere about two months ago. Um, I finally found out that it needs a new engine. It's under warranty. And basically, we are getting nowhere with GM and finding out an answer on when we will get a new engine. Um, I have a friend that owns a body shop where we live, and I kind of said, hey, can you give us some advice? When do you think we would possibly get a new engine? Because we're getting nowhere with GM. He said, let me make a few phone calls and get back to you. And basically said, I would start shopping for new vehicles. So here we are unplanned, trying to figure out, should we wait, you know, possibly the three, four, however many months to get my vehicle back since it is under warranty. It's completely paid for, um, you know, we have the cash to pay for the difference for a new vehicle, but it's just not the ideal time. We weren't planning on getting a new vehicle at all. Now, in a crummy time to buy a car right now. It's terrible. Yeah. I'm sorry. What a mess. So when you talk to yeah, the so, uh, General Motors folks, what are they telling you? So they're, they, it's basically a back and forth of, you know, my husband's at this point trying to see where we are in line. You know, we could be 30 in line. We could be 900 in line. And so they told us last week, you know, we'll get back to you. We still haven't heard back. Um, It's basically going nowhere. Well, it's going somewhere based on the size of the foot you put on their butt. True. That's true. They said they would try to escalate it, but who knows if they actually will. It might actually escalate for them. (laughs) Um, So, you know, I call the general manager of the dealership and explain to him you're getting ready to hire an attorney. Okay. Because they're okay. not they're not honoring their warranty, and you being without a car is not okay. And you know, let's jack them yeah, up. Because this, I, I, yeah, I'm guessing this is a supply chain COVID. problem. Because it's not General Motors DNA to be this uh, uncooperative. Usually, they're very good about stuff. Yes, and they basically are blaming everything on COVID and like yeah. said, supply yeah, chain. Supply chain. They can't get an engine out of the dead gum factory. Well, I'm going to be uh-huh. calling them every day for updates. To, you're the squeaky wheel who gets the grease. And on top of that, I'm going to go to the dealership and say, you're going to let me use a car until this is fixed, and you're going to do it for free. Ooh, there's a good idea. Yeah, we've tried to, We've tried doing – we've tried getting a loaner. They don't have any cars. Again, yeah, they said they don't have any loaners because of COVID. And the, the hard part about it is, too, is so we live in the middle of nowhere, and our car is in – El Paso, Texas, two hours away. So it's not a thing, you know, where we can go in there yeah. every day. We have been on the phone with, um, you know, the person in the uh, shop every day. But basically, that's where they escalated it to GM mm-hmm. corporate. And mm-hmm. my husband's been in communication with them. Yeah, I think I'm going to be in touch with the regional corporate guy and say, you guys need to get me a loaner. I'm with George on that. That's a brilliant idea. Uh, and guys, we understand that you got supply chain problems, but you need to understand I also don't have a car. Yes. And so uh-huh. that's a bigger deal for me than your supply chain problems. So get me a car. Exactly. And so get me a car. You yeah, know, I'll, I'll be real understanding if you get me a car. Bring me a car. Okay. So now. You don't think just, like, bring me a car now. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like, okay. Yeah, that's that's what we've been trying to do. And then, you yeah, know, I know. But like, I, I think you're being, what we're saying car? is we think you're being too nice. Yeah. 
<laughs> I Channel your inner Dave Ramsey when are. you show up. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, and that's why we're going back and forth. And, you know, we've been said, yeah. saying, you know, should we just go get a different car? Because this is the second major issue that we've had with this car. Well, if you want to sell it, that's it fine. Sell it after it's fixed. But in the meantime, they should provide you a car. If you, if you, if you jack everybody up, you still don't get a car and you still don't get an engine and you've got the money, I guess you're going to have to go buy a car, aren't you? I know. And, and then sell that one when it gets really fixed, right? Yes, and that's what I. That's another thing, because they're low-balling us, because we've tried to say, hey, what would you give us for this? And they're low-balling us. And we do have the, the money to go. We are in, in a very blessed situation yeah, where just, just go buy you know, a car and want, then get that car fixed car. and get it sold. If you can't get okay. a loaner, and I really am going to okay. be talking to the regional guys. I've actually had two people work for me over the years that used to be General Motors regional customer uh, service reps. And so they had regional uh-huh. guys, and I don't know if they still do or not, but that was, cause that was a few years back. But uh, And honestly, they are trained like no other to, to make customers happy. Now, I understand mm-hmm. they can't make cars or engines appear out of thin air, but, uh, but yeah. they can uh, if, if you make it a big enough deal and go, listen, I really don't want to go legal on you guys, but I'm getting ready to hire an attorney, and we're going to make you yeah. guys wish you would loan me a car. Yeah, I agree because I'm at the point where I'm, I'm almost don't even want to buy another GM vehicle ever. Yeah, well, I mean, so. you can tell them that too. I mean, that, that that's understandable. And and the sad thing is, they make great cars. I've owned them all my life. But um, yeah, uh, you know, it, it 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 is what it is. But here's the thing, companies out there listening, you have legitimate supply chain issues but your customer has legitimate problems and your job as the company solve the customer problem, they don't really care about your problem. They don't really care. Yeah, and a big part of this is to realize you have options. It's when you realize, well, we, we got to go get a new car. because I'm going to be beating down their door until we have a solution here. And the worst, worst case is we get a temporary car, we resell it, and hopefully we don't lose any money. Drive on the, the car that, or buy the car you want to replace it with and, direct, and then sell the uh, suburban when you get it fixed that's yeah. fine that's a fine answer too you got the money to do that it's just inconvenient and you shouldn't have to you shouldn't have to they should they should take care of you so and i got a feeling if you lean in hard enough and often enough that probably you're going to get that result that was a good fix george that's a good Thank fix you. for the problem i always start with kindness and then i get a little more firm when things aren't going the way they should and uh, it's a hard thing to do with customer service a lot of people have a hard time mm-hmm. you know being the being bad cop yeah well, I don't. Yeah, I don't want to just start in chewing somebody out. But, yeah. But we do need to, you know, click up, click up, click up the heat as we go along. And um, I mean, uh, you know, if the food's not coming from the kitchen, it's like, hello, been an hour, we need some food, you know. And we've talked about this a couple times. Now, do I need to talk to a manager? How can I help you? Yeah. You need me to go back there and help you cook? I mean, what's the deal? I, I would love food. to see you back here in the kitchen. Food Dave. needs to come out of the kitchen, baby. I mean, you can grill. I've this, seen this, you ha- grill. this happened the other day, I'm just saying. This is the Ramsey Show. I say it all the time. If you're a business owner and you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. And when markets are shifting, it's even more important. You've got to know where you stand so you make your next move the right move. And you don't have to be in the dark here. Over 31,000 businesses, including my team at Ramsey, know their numbers because they use NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. NetSuite gives you visibility and control of your financials, planning, budgeting, and inventory so you can manage risk, get reliable forecasts, and improve margins. Having everything in one place has saved my team hours each week since we made the switch to NetSuite. NetSuite is a game changer. So head on over to netsuite.com slash Ramsey to get a product tour today. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey.
We've taught gods and grandmas ways of handling money for 30 years here at Ramsey. And now my good friend and expert, Dr. John Deloney, is paving the way for how we talk about relationships and mental health. His brand new book, Own Your Past, Change Your Future, has been on sale now for eight days. It's available for purchase, and it's a book everyone needs to read. It has personally changed the language I use with others. It's changed me. It changed George. Who knew? There we go. This book is not just for people who are healing from some terrible traumatic experience. The practical steps packed in here apply to everyone in every walk of life. The single 30-year-old looking to sharpen their mind, the 25-year-old who's out of college and looking to make friends, the mom and dad who want to connect with their grown kids better or their young kids better, people coming out of abusive relationships, everyone, every one of you listening right now has a story. John took his two PhDs, his 20 years of counseling experience, and packed it into an easy-to-understand book. Pick up your copy of Own Your Past, Change Your Future today for only 20 bucks at Ramsey solutions.com. Don't miss this. Lori is in Chicago. Hi, Lori. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? I am going to court tomorrow for a credit card debt. Um, a The credit card original company sold it to a debt buyer, and now the lawyer is suing me. Mm-hmm. And um, I tried settling two times. And they really wouldn't go down very much. It's the original debt is eighty five hundred dollars, mm-hmm. and they went down as far as fifty nine eighty five. Mm-hmm. I was just wondering if you had any ideas of what I could do as far as facing a lawyer tomorrow, or if I should still try to call this company that's not working with me. They wanted me to make payments, and I know you're not for that. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. It doesn't work out well for you. Um, the lump sum settlement is the only way to go. Have you got the money to settle tomorrow? No, not no. I don't have that much. I tried settling. Um, I I can give them twenty three hundred. How much do you I have? Two thousand three hundred. Okay. What was the original debt? Uh, eighty five fifty. That was the original debt, not what they say you owe. I'm I'm not sure how how that exactly works. No. How much it's did you borrow? How much was owed when you quit paying it? Well, it went through another collection agency. It was sold again. So No, um, no, no. That's not what I'm asking. I'm asking when you I'm quit sorry. paying the credit card, how much yeah. was owed? Um, sorry. Years ago. Few of them. Um, nine, I believe it was $9,766. No. I was making payments. No, it wouldn't have gone down. Well, I made. I was making payments to the original. Uh, oh. Made. Okay. All right. Well, they probably, as you've heard on the show, probably paid a nickel on the dollar for it. Right. So they probably got five, six hundred bucks in this debt. Um, right. Can you get any more together than twenty five hundred? Well, I have some saved for my um, uh, my taxes on my house. Um, I mean. I'm very limited, maybe 3000 Okay. All right. Or, or maybe that. if you used a little bit of that tax money. If you get rid of this, it's worth it, okay? If you go to 3500 or 4000 and you get rid of an eight or a $10,000 debt, it's going to be worth it. So here's what's going to happen, all right? When you go into court on a debt this size, you it's um, very similar. This is not high drama with Matlock or some big high-powered, whatever you think of, attorney on some television show, okay? This is more mm-hmm. like going to traffic court when you got a ticket that time. You ever done okay. that? Not that, but I've done something else. <laughs> okay. You, but, have you gone to court when it was like a big yawn and it was all yeah. like a conveyor belt and it was automatic right. and nobody cared and there was no drama? Right. And there was no shaming, and there was nothing legal. It was just boom, clip, clip, clip. You're out of there. Mm-hmm. That's what this is going to be. I it's, had it's not, heard you once say to um, try to find the lawyer ahead of time. Yes, and she can make a deal then in the hall. Yeah. Otherwise, walk up in front of the judge and tell the judge you've tried to make a deal, and you know that this is a debt buyer, and you know that they paid a nickel on the dollar for it approximately because that's industry, industry standard. And I'm standing here offering this guy $3,000, and we can't get him to take it, Your Honor. 
and he's going to shame the attorney then because you're going to be the only human that showed up on this whole thing. This guy's got 200 cases. All of them are on automatic smackdown, and no humans show up except old Lori, and there she stands. So you're going to be like the entertainment for the morning. Right. Do they care about any of my history nope. regarding nope. nothing? So they don't, they don't care about your story. They don't think. They don't care if you're pitiful. Right. They don't care. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. It's just money. Okay. It's just very ag- so, very agnostic. There's no spirit to it. There's no morals to it. It's just I want some money, and if you give me some money, oh, and I don't like the money, and then the you tell the judge, and here's the money, and the judge goes, oh, come on. It's going to sound like that. It's going to be like Judge Judy or something in here, right? Okay, and you don't think that the lawyer will, or I mean, the judge will say that make payments? He might. <laughs> he might. He might slap you with a garnishment. I don't know. It's possible. But okay. you don't have a lot of options here. Your only option is settle it. If you can't settle it, ask the judge to settle it. Otherwise, he's going to, he's going to make you do something because he's going to do that anyway. Right. If you don't show up, they're going to get a judgment, and they're going to begin to garnish you. Yeah, I'll show up. <laughs> Okay, but I'm just saying, if you don't show, you automatically lose. But by the way, you're in the wrong, so you're automatically going to lose anyway. Mm-hmm. I know. The only question is, can you just, you know, by by being a human and being there, do you influence the process and get a settlement? But you got really no defense. You owe the debt. You didn't pay it. There's no defense. Mm-hmm. There's Lori, no- how old is this debt? Um, it was from, um, well, these guys purchased it in 2020. When did you? Um, oh, okay. That, the last time I paid. So it's a few years old. Top of 18, 2018. Okay. okay. And what was it originally? What kind of credit card? Uh, the name of the credit card mm-hmm. was Capital One. Okay. All right. Yeah, they'll sue you on 10000 bucks. They usually won't screw with it on under five because it's not worth their legal f- hassle. But the debt buyers sometimes will screw with it if they buy it under five. And so... Yeah, this is a pretty substantial account. Most debt is under $5,000 per card. But good old Capital One. What's in your wallet? Lawsuits. <laughs> Apparently. Man. I haven't I haven't heard a lot of situations where people are going to court over the credit card debt. It doesn't happen very often. It it's usually happen. they just deal with the debt settlement companies and they try to, you know, well, negotiate the, it The down. debt buyer will usually settle. And again, folks, they're buying these things at a nickel on the dollar. Um, and, you know, we did this. Oh, well, yeah. Christmas before last. We paid off a bunch of debt. Yeah, we bought $10 million worth of debt from, uh, from a lot of it was medical debt. And uh, we, we bought $10 million for a quarter on our, our for 2.5%. Paid wow. $250,000 for it. And we call, we had all of our, uh, eight th- our, our employees, give, we gave them eight each. There was like, um, what, uh, there was like 10,000 accounts roughly. And uh, they each called and told people for Christmas that their debt was forgiven. So we bought $10 million worth and forgave it. And it was our Christmas. It was what I, it's what we did for Christmas. Yeah. We had our, a, for that our was team. our favorite gift. And it was a blast. But we bought that for 250000 is $10 million, a little north of $10 million. So that's that's 25 cents on, I mean, that's uh, two and a half cents on the dollar. Yeah, we bought the whole book of so debt. So there's the proof. I mean, now that was old Medical debt, which is that, by the way, is usually cheaper to buy yeah. than old credit card. There was debt. some car loans in there too. But, I remember calling someone and saying we paid off their. Yeah, car. we got a few credit cards in there. I think we got. A, I think we probably got. I don't know, a couple of hundred credit cards in there, but yeah. most of it was medical. But so you you can buy debt for a nickel on the dollar and then go try to collect it. Um, Anything they make over that is profit. Yeah, we did, we hope. didn't collect it. We just sent them all letters, and a lot of them thought we were scamming them. Oh yeah. No They're one like, believed me what? when I called. They what? said, what? I didn't ask yeah, you to do that. So fun. We got some great videos. There were some inspiring ones, too. A lot and of some tears. Some of them just broke down and cried. Yeah, it was sweet. But some but people were just angry with me. Yeah. Why are you calling me? I'm busy. Okay. Sorry, sir. Have a good day. Just calling to tell you you don't owe the debt anymore. What? I didn't ask you to do that. Who are okay. you? Well, I we didn't did tell it you to do that. Who are you? What are you, the Grinch? It's Christmas. Oh, my gosh. Too funny. It's a blast. So, yeah, that's the truth. And so you can, you can buy debt like that. And if you're want to write big checks anyway and so that's kind of proof that what we're saying is true that yeah. you can buy it for a nickel on which is why they probably got negotiate. about a nickel on the dollar on it and this is uh good old city bank at your service just think of that next time you see one of those stupid buck commercials of theirs this is the ramsey show
Look, I love real estate and I want you to have a house, but I don't want a house to have you. That's why you need to get in touch with Churchill Mortgage to make sure you do this right. These guys are awesome. They'll help you get on a smarter mortgage plan because they're committed to doing what's right for you. That means they check in every year with free consultations to help you stay on the right plan. They show you how to save money and interest so you can build wealth faster. They walk you through the total cost of your loan so you can make the best choice. Basically, they care. That's why we call them Ramsey Trusted. You can achieve debt-free home ownership and Churchill is here to help. Go to their site, churchillmortgage.com slash Ramsey to start your approval or get more information. personality is my co-host in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt free stage. Courtney is with us. Hi, Courtney. How are you? I'm doing great, Dave. How are you? I am better than I deserve. It's so <gasps> oh, good. Oh, I'd love to, to hear you. that. <laughs> Where do you live? I live in Houston, Texas. Good. Fine. Welcome to Nashville. Yes. All right. How much debt have you paid off? I paid off $113,874. I love it. And how long did that take? It took me 30 months. Good. And your range of income during that Between time? Between 74000 to 90000 Cool. What do you do for a living? I am a director of marketing. I work in real estate. Good, good. And uh, what kind of debt was your 114000 So most of it, about 94000 of it was from student loan debt, and the rest was from my car loan. Okay, cool. Yeah. What would you get your degree in? I got my degree in health science and biology. It was totally different from what my career is. So. That's okay. Yeah. You, now you're making money. Life's good. <laughs> Yes. And you paid it off. That's yes. the other thing that's good. So mm -hmm. good for you. So how long have you been out of school? I've been out of school, oh my God, I graduated in 2012. So it's been a really long time since so I've like been out of school. So eight, like eight, nine years. Yeah. All right. But but two and a half years ago, bing, bing, what happened? Okay. So I've been getting these mails from my, you know, from Fed loans saying, you owe money, you owe money. And I was talking to my friend and she's like, Courtney, just look at it as a debt you'll pay for the rest of your life. A oh, bill. that's so, pro <laughs> that's so hopeful. What good friends. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I, I want better than that. So I yeah. came across your YouTube channel and I've been hooked ever since. I purchased total, the Total Money Makeover. I listened to podcasts. I mean, I was hooked on you. Um, and I got debt free because of you. So I thank you for that. Well, thank you. Wow. Way yeah. to go. You did the work. Yeah. You're impressive. That's yeah. You know, we're about the same age. I graduated graduated the same year mm -hmm. with a, a lot less debt than you. But yeah. was that a slog to get through? It was. It was a slog. I had to really use that debt snowball method to really take it piece by piece because looking at it full on, I was terrified. I was like, I'll never get it done. Mm. But doing it smaller by smaller, it helped me really accomplish that goal. Yeah. You know? When you yeah. look at that debt and you're like, I don't even make that much. How am I ever going to make these payments? And right. you started doing the debt snowball. Was there a moment where you were like, oh, this is working. I see the progress. Yeah, I think my third or fourth loan I paid off. I was like, okay, I can do this chucking along. And I had my mini victories for those ones that I did pay off. So it made it much better getting to the final destination. That's so. fun. What, what was those mini victories? Did you celebrate in some way? I did celebrate. I might have bought a pair of shoes or something small. Sorry, Dave. You know, I wasn't on <laughs> rice and beans the whole time. But I did have to, you know, give myself a some little small. treat self moment yeah yeah so okay. i had to do that for myself yeah. well I you were very reasonable yeah. yeah i might celebrate but it wouldn't be shoes <laughs> not shoes yeah but, <laughs> but that's you know ken coleman he would buy shoes ken yeah definitely would <laughs> definitely for sure oh that's awesome congratulations thank you so thank proud you, of you. Thank who was your you. biggest cheerleaders my biggest was um my parents were really good my family um my boyfriend terrence he was great helping me out a lot of the way so yeah okay. Cool. And you clearly had some detractors there. Does your friend now go, wait, you did it? It didn't yeah. take you your whole life? Yeah. And they're like, well, Courtney, can you tell me more about this debt snowball method? Who is this Dave Ramsey person? So I'm just putting them all drinking the, the Kool-Aid of Dave Ramsey. So. so you just put debt free in the search bar on YouTube and there we were? Or, there you or, were. Or that's there how you, you found were. That's how I found you. Yeah. Wow. Oh, my God. So, I mean, literally, even like my passwords on my computer was like debt free 2021. I really wrote a vision and made it plain. And Ooh. I stuck to that. 
Habakkuk 3.3. 3. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Well done. Yeah. Write the vision that's and good. make it plain. I got yeah. That's good. Hey, when you do that, something something snaps when you write it down and you put it right in front of you and you go, okay, I got to do this. And there's an accountability that starts to work in your brain that's yeah. really powerful. And then you tell people you're doing it and they're like cheering you on. You're like, I can't let them down. Yeah. yeah. I mean, even on my vision board, I wrote like a blank check and to my Fed loan with the amount to pay off. And it's crazy wow. that now it's finally done. So. George, the she, blank she has check. a vision board. Yes. You're incredible. She has a vision board. That's like a life hack. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like you it. need That's it. That's really good. You don't really need to manifest good. it when you just write it down and go, I'm going to write this check one day, and it's going to feel so good to have no payments in the world. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Love it. Wow. How does it feel? It feels great. It feels great to be finally free, to have no one calling me. I mean, I did work another. I worked two jobs. I had mm -hmm. my full-time job, and I worked part-time at Amazon as a personal shopper. Mm -hmm. I remember listening to your show during COVID. You're like, hey, get a part-time job while you can. So I, I did that, and it helped me a lot. How much did they pay you for that? They were paying me about, I think, about $15 an hour. Wow. That's rowdy. Yeah, okay. and you made your own hours. And I it worked. was all, all, all remote, and you just check in, check out. Um, no, so I worked. I worked in the store, so I was like, oh, um, literally in the literally store. in the store. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. Okay. So I did oh that. Oh my gosh. So physically, physically, Amazon did something physical. It's Who knew? Amazing. <laughs> Except deliver. Yeah. Was this okay. an Amazon store? No, so it was Amazon with Whole Foods. So you, I would oh, clock in like at four it. in the morning, and I would like pick up groceries for people, and they would. I've been known to it. do that. The Amazon yeah. Whole Foods delivery, Dave. You have two hour delivery. You can't beat that. You have. And it was free at the time. <laughs> George. You know we're a, we're a generation of convenience, Dave. George. That's such I know a you went uphill. That's such a millennial Dave thing went to do. uphill both ways. He I not understand. only shopped at Whole Foods, but I had them deliver it. George. <laughs> it's even just, more That doesn't even bougie. compute to a dinosaur. I'm sure like Rachel me. would do that. I'm sure Rachel has done that. Like today. Yes. For sure. There's no question. Oh. So, well, that's uh, awesome. You were willing to do whatever it took to get this thing well out of your life. Well done. Well yes. done. Proud of you. Thank you. What do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? Um, consistency and having that discipline. And yeah. the key is, like I said, making uh, writing a vision, making it plain. Yeah. Work at Whole Foods instead of buy at Whole Foods. There you go. That, that'd, that'd be a hint. <laughs> you that'd got be a paid. life hack. She got paid to be inside of a Whole Foods. Yeah. That's historic. Yeah, and walk out without buying anything. Hello, yeah. Whole paycheck. That's the place, yeah. Okay, wow. Good for you. I'm so proud of you. All right, we got a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires for you. That's the next chapter in your story for sure. You are definitely on your way. That's the next thing for the vision board. Yes, Right? Millionaire status. On your way. Gang on. Mm -hmm. Game on. Game on. Game on. I love it. Very cool. Also, a copy of Total Money Makeover for you to give to your friend who doesn't think she can do it. So maybe we can gang up on her and help her do it <laughs> in a good way. So good stuff. Very, very cool, Courtney. You're a rock star. You're amazing. We're so proud of you. Thank you. Very well done. All right, Courtney from Houston, Texas, $114,000 paid off in two and a half years, 30 long, short months making 74 to 90 with the extra job count it down let's hear a debt-free scream three two one i'm debt free <laughs> yeah wow reminds me of the henry ford quote if you think you can you think you can't you're right you're right and she thought she could and she was right i don't know what happens in the human spirit or in the human brain when you write something down that means a lot to you, not just generally writing something down, but you go, okay, I am going to lose 30 pounds in 90 days, and you write it out. As soon as you write it down, something snaps. I'm going to increase my income to $100,000 this year. As soon as you write it out and you actually believe it, what you can, you know, what you believe, can conceive and believe you can achieve, Earl Nightingale used to say, something happens. It's not magic, and it's not, it's not just the power of positive thinking, but there's something about when, you, when your brain, the neuropathways, when you get really precise and concise and say, this is my desired future, and then you, your brain automatically kicks into gear, okay, what have I got to do to make that happen? Mm. That's a mix of science and spirit. You yeah. have a little bit of both in there, a little psychology, a little brain magic, but then also... It changes your spirit, and you go, okay, I'm going to do this. It's for real this time. Mm -hmm. I'm not playing around. And that's exactly what Courtney did. Yeah, she's she's powerful. And, and, you know, she's quoting a scripture from the Old Testament, Habakkuk there, Habakkuk 3.3, 3, I believe it is. It says, uh, write the vision and make it plain. And so take your vision, write it out. And that's just not, again, not hocus pocus, and it's not just goal setting is magical. It's not. It's not magical unless you go do the work to cause the thing to happen. 
I mean, if you write down, I'm going to lose 30 pounds, and then you eat a bag of cookies 20 minutes later, probably not on track, right? So, well, before I get started, you know, no, no. So, um, it's a I, I don't know anybody's done that, but um, <laughs> I could probably do it. Yeah. So, uh, you got to write this out, and, and something happens, or something, your brain just goes, zoop, and it starts focusing. And all the distractions out here, the things that were causing you to, to bounce off the walls and not hit your goals, they start to be minimized, and the things that cause you to hit your goals start to be maximized. Mm. There's something about it. Yeah. And so that, and really, you know what a budget is? It's, ri- it's written goals. Yeah. Written goals for the month. That's yeah. all it is. If you think you're going to pay off Sally Mae for the rest of your life, you're probably right. And if you think you're going to pay her off in two years, you're probably right. Yep. It's amazing how that works. Yep. Because you will find your way at 4 a.m. into a Whole Foods to pack groceries. That's right. This is The Ramsey Show. If you want to come on the Ramsey Show in person here in the lobby, if you want to visit the lobby, come visit anytime, by the way, sidebar. Um, it's here in Nashville. Our visitor center is pretty stinking incredible. All kinds of timelines and wonderful things. You can enjoy the whole Ramsey experience here. Uh, free homemade cookies. Oh, my gosh. And coffee and all kinds of stuff in our snack bar. We've got a big bookstore area. And you can sit and watch the show if you'd like. It's taped in the afternoons. Not taped. It's live in the afternoons. And is also taped while we're doing it live. Uh, from 1 to 4 Central Time. So if you're in the Nashville area, put us on your stop. We're a little bit south of Nashville in a wonderful town called Franklin, Tennessee. Now, if you want to do your debt-free scream on the phone... You can do that. A lot of people do. And, but these days, a lot of people go, oh, the way I'm going to celebrate debt freedom is I'm going to make a trip to Nashville because it's a cool city, and I want to see the city, and I'm going to use this Dave thing, as an, this Ramsey thing as an excuse for doing that. So if you want to do that, you go, George, you need to go to the website and fill out what's going on. So what do yes, you Yes, RamseySolutions.com slash debt free screen will take you straight to the form to apply. Okay. Now, the idea of the debt free screen is two things. One is, it is a chance for you to celebrate the transformation that has occurred in your life and in the life of your family. And we want to celebrate that milestone with you. Also, we, the the benefit of that is there's probably a thousand or more now posted on our YouTube channel. We put all the, all the debt-free screams on the YouTube channel. And so you can just sit and watch them for days. Uh, but they're the, the, your debt-free scream is to motivate others, to tell other people that this can be done. Now, this, when we say this, George, that's an important qualification. What is this? This is to become debt-free and stay debt-free. Yes. And so you've got to follow the plan to a T. And still be following it. To this day. To Which this means day. maybe you're not using a credit card anymore. Not maybe. It means you're not using a credit card anymore. And so let me help you with this. Kelly just told us at the break, and we were just flabbergasted, that like uh, one out of three or so of you that apply to do your debt-free scream are still using credit cards. Let me tell you what happens. Eh, 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 We throw you in the trash bin. In the digital trash bin. We don't want to motivate other people to be like you. We want to motivate people to be not like you. And so um, that's the whole thing. Get out of debt. Stay out of debt. You're not using your stinking credit cards anymore. And you're not violating six other things we teach around here, you know, uh, uh, every day. Because that's not consistent with we're trying to create a, a transformed life here, not just a simple number that you paid off the debt and then you're, you know, you're going to go back in. Yeah, the debt-free screams are not for those that are Dave-ish. It's fine if or you Ramsey-ish. did that. Or Ramsey-ish. Yeah, it's fine if you did that. But or we just want to celebrate. At all. We want to celebrate the people who really made the sacrifices, who had that full 
180 life transformation. So there's a series of questions when you go fill out the form at RamseySolutions.com slash debt free scream. And some of those questions uh, involve your financial habits. And so make sure that you answer those honestly. First of all, don't skirt around the process. Kelly will sniff you out. But we get thousands of applications every year. It's, and it, it, you have to get quite a line to do your debt free yeah. scream. There's and a lot of people wanting to do it that are actually doing this stuff. So we tell people to apply months ahead of their debt free date because there's such a long line ahead of you. But you're going to get thrown out if you don't do it the right way. And like Kelly mentioned, 40% of you said, I'm using a credit card still. And, which means, hey, more room for the other 60% yeah, who followed the plan. And here's the thing. It'll, it'll save you a lot of time to just not even fill out the application because you're not going to be on. Okay. And well, Dave, I don't like that. Well, then get your own radio show. This is mine. So, um, and I get to do what I want. It says Ramsey on it. <laughs> Isn't that magic? So, um, it's not fair, so, Dave. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so, you can do your own debt free scream on your own YouTube I, channel. Yeah, just, that works just too. Make it up. Just, yeah, just, just jump out there and all six of your followers and they can, they can see you do it. So, um, but if you want to do it here, we're going to celebrate the proper kind of life transformation that sticks and that is generational and everything's going through. So, no credit card use and, uh, you know, don't be ishing. The stuff we talk about. Don't borrow because from your we don't want to li- We don't want to lift that up. That's not wh- what we want to encourage people to be. It's not that we're mad at you. Well, you're just being snobbish. No, we're, we have a very dialed-in purpose for this. It's to motivate people to do things that, that, that we teach and have taught for 30 years because they work, because they're good for you. Um, it's, you know, and, and it's kind of unsatisfying for us to sit and watch you have to do stuff. So... We don't want to do that. But, Dave, we're missing out on the debt-free screams where they go, Dave, the way I got debt-free was my credit card points. Yeah, That's I miss, how I did it. I missed that. I borrowed from the 401k, Dave. That's how I got debt-free. Yeah. I borrowed my way out of debt. That's how I got debt-free. Yeah. this is these All these things come up, believe it or not. So there's some clarification for you. And um, Kelly is um, uh, world-renowned for being able to figure out if you're lying or not. Um, she's like, it's like scary. She's got a pretty good BS meter. She's looking at me right now. I think I failed. <laughs> <laughs> RamseySolutions.com. You're, you're a little intimidated, are you? Okay, good. That's good. All right. Chris is with us. <laughs> Cleveland, Ohio. Hi, Chris. What's up? Hi, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. Um, I'll, I'll try to be as brief as possible. Um, my question is my wife and I over the last two and a half years have really focused in on the steps and have been in a situation where now we financially were able to pay off the house uh, last fall. Um, We have no credit card debt. Um, And it seems to me at this point where our income levels are, she had recently gotten promoted about two years ago, that now we're getting just absolutely at the end of the year crushed and having to write big checks for taxes. And I guess my question is, I mean, is, is potentially looking into an LLC with some rental properties, even something that should be on the table to even look at. Well, an LLC doesn't change the taxes at all. You can own the rental property in your personal name. Well, or you can protect, own it in an LLC. Protection-wise. Yeah, well, tax-wise, it doesn't change the taxes one bit. Protection-wise, it, it's good okay. to put rental property in there. From a risk management standpoint, somebody falls and breaks their face on that property, then they can sue only the owner of that property, which happens to not be you, happens to be an LLC. So they don't come take your personal vehicle. So from a risk management standpoint, I no longer own anything. I'm completely poor. A company that I own owns everything. Uh, you know, so I've got this stack of LLCs. It's ridiculous. My cars are even owned by LLCs now. So, um, but that's just because, you know, I'm now I'm, I'm at a point that I'm a target for lawsuits. Uh, because it's like, oh, Dave Ramsey bumped into my car. Woohoo! You know, so it's like. Easier than winning the lottery. Yeah! I'll tell you that much. Who yeah. needed a job? Yeah. So, um, anyway, but you're not going to quite be that way with one rental property. Of course, we're going to tell you to pay cash for the rental property or not buy it. And don't do things that don't make economic sense only for tax reasons. Okay. And uh, if you get tired of paying taxes and mad about paying taxes like I have and like you are, you can go that way. And I have found myself tempted to enter into things that really don't make any sense except the fact that they are a huge tax write-off. And so I, I don't do I would rather just give it to charity, and then you can write it off, you know, than I would go lose it and do something bogus that gets me in a bind later in order to get a write-off. So yeah. as long as you're paying cash for the rental, 
Um, yeah, throw it in an LLC for risk management. Doesn't change the taxes. Same depreciation schedule either way. It's all passed through on an LLC. It still lands on your personal return. Doesn't change a stinking thing as far as that goes. But, yeah, it's okay to start talking about doing that. Um, and it is one of the benefits of owning some real estate. And I'd talk with a tax pro. If you don't have one already, you can jump on to RamseySolutions.com. But working with one of those ELPs, they can look at your whole situation and go, oh, here's a spot you missed. Here's a spot we can save you on taxes. Here's how to lower your taxable income. So that could help if you're not already working with a pro. Yeah. And, and this idea that the rich don't pay taxes um, is 98% hogwash. I pay so much in taxes, I can't breathe. I pay more in taxes in a year than I made in the first 10 years of my working life. Wow. I mean, I, so the idea that rich don't pay taxes, absolutely. And I'm really good at this stuff. So it's just asinine that, that you know. Well, Warren Buffett's secretary pays at a higher rate than he does. Yeah, he lives off capital gains, which is a 15% rate. But it's 15% of a billion. And he's not, he, the only thing he has are investments. He has yeah. no earned income, only investments. So at a higher rate, yes, but his secretary doesn't have a billion dollars that she's living off of. And so she's paying ordinary income. So that's just a bogus argument, too. Well, that's not fair. That's yeah, absolutely fair. It's the tax code. Sorry, boys and girls. It's the law. This is The Ramsey Show. Do you love a good Dave rant? Want to see the latest Ramsey Show videos going viral? Check out your favorite moments from The Ramsey Show on YouTube. Go watch and subscribe to The Ramsey Show channel on YouTube. about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. You jump in, we'll talk about your life and your money. It's a free call at 888 888- 825-5225. George Camel, Ramsey personality, host of the Entree Leadership Podcast, the Fine Print Podcast, and many other things around Ramsey, is my co-host as we answer your questions. We help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create real, high-quality relationships. It's your life, and it's right here on the radio. Ray is with us. Ray is in Cincinnati. Hi, Ray. Welcome to the show. Thanks. Uh, thanks for taking my call, guys. Sure. What's up? My question is, uh, I'm looking for the best way to purchase a family farm from a trust. Uh, my in-law offered to sell us the farm at about half its value because he just uh, no longer can really maintain it. He wants to make sure he can. Uh, he'd like to see something done with it. Why he has the ability to make the decisions? Uh, why he's got his health? Uh, like I said, it's already in a family trust where my wife and uh, four kids make up half the trustees. And it's like a dream opportunity, but we have about 90000 left on our current mortgage, and we we're hoping that in about two and a half years we were going to be completely debt-free. But it's a dream for us to have the farm. So we didn't know if any ideas how to uh, make this happen, any uh, special transfers or anything we can do. Just trying to come up with a way to make this happen. Okay. Who owns, who has the beneficial interest in the trust? Who's the owner of the farm today? Not your wife, just this one in-law? Yes. Okay. So this one person is going to be the only benefit. Correct. Okay. And what are they selling it to you for? What is the dollar amount? Uh, 300,000. It will be about half the actual value. And what is your, I heard that part earlier. What is your house worth? Uh, I would say probably four hundred thousand. And you can, owe ninety. Can, you can can you not live on the farm? Uh, well, uh, sorry, I left that part out. They would love to stay. They want to stay on the farm until they pass. So, and no, the farmhouse is not big enough to hold our family. 
they live in the farmhouse now? Correct. How many acres is the farm? Uh, roughly 90 acres. Would you farm it? Well, it's cash lease right now, and that farm income covers the taxes and insurance, and I would continue to do that and then have some recreational property there also. So when the person passes, what will happen to the farmhouse? Will you live in it? Uh, at that point, we don't know if it would be uh, you know, a home would park. Would you build on another portion of the farm? I don't believe so. I'm confused, right? This doesn't even make sense. You're saying this is your dream, but it also has no feasibility for your family to live there. Well, it's uh, just the location, the recreation, the... Uh, Owning, owning the dirt is the dream, not living on it. Correct. Okay. All right. Um, well, I, here's what I'd think about doing. All right. I'd think about carving out one acre around the house that the person who wants to live in, give them a life estate to that house and one acre, not to the entire property. Okay. I would sell your house and move into a rental and buy this property. Now you own it. Okay? Then you've got okay. two options. One is start saving like crazy for a good strong down payment on a house or uh, start talking about building on this property and getting a construction loan to do that. How far is it from your work? Uh, 30 miles. How far uh, are you from your work now? 25. No, 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 okay, that's a break even. So I'm going to challenge you to find a corner of the property, not right square in the middle of the stinking thing, and look for a building site. All right. Okay, so really then you're you're going to you're you're only going to be in debt what it takes to build a house. Cuz you're going to be able to pay cash for the property when you sell your property. Yes. Okay. How old is the people living in the farmhouse? Uh, late 70s. Do you want to rent until they leave? No. Okay. Probably not. Okay. So uh, what I'm what I'm saying is, okay, how big <laughs> – here's your trade-off, okay? I always look at things in a trade-off, in like one hand, two hands, right? The, the old tipping of the scales kind of a thing. If you visualize the scales of justice a little bit, okay? You want to own this. How bad do you want to own it? How much inconvenience are you willing to go to to get to own it and do it in a wise way? Paying cash for it from the sale of your property sounds okay. That leaves you homeless, however, and we got to figure out a place for you to park, Right. Yes. And so the trade-off is, do you go into debt to build you a house and put it on a 15-year fixed or less and build you a pretty nice property equal to the one you've got now in the corner of the farm somewhere, leaving the rest of it open for farming and recreation? Uh, you maybe turn the little, uh, little farmhouse into a rental when the people pass, the uncle passes or whatever. Um, or you just go rent and start piling up some cash and reassess your options, but now your dream is. So are you willing to, on the, the negative side to rent or be inconvenienced in order to live this dream, or you want your cake and eat it too? If you want your cake and eat it too, you're going to break yourself. You don't have enough money. Yeah. The thing is, they, when they pass, my wife and the kids become 50% owners in it at that point anyway. But then I think things get messy, and that's what I kind of worry about. I agree. Go ahead and close on it. I'd sell the one you live in. I'd do the deal. Okay. You can buy a six hundred thousand right. dollar property for three hundred thousand, and basically they're advancing you her half, is what they're doing. They're not really discounting it. Yeah. They're just advancing you her half. Correct. And then and okay. but you own the dirt, and then I'm gonna figure out some way to live on that dirt if I'm you. And how desperate do you want to be on that? I mean. People have done some crazy things that I wouldn't do that have called this show, like roll a roll a uh, uh, a trailer, you know, a five thousand dollar trailer up on there and park it or something. I, I'm not living in that, but because I'm a snob, but um, <laughs> but you know, you you figure out what you, you're coming out of a four hundred thousand dollar house, so I'm not making that as a viable suggestion, okay? But what would Ramses do? Uh, I like dirt, you know. I got a two hundred fifty acre farm just over the hill over here. It's one of my favorite places on the planet. And so I, I'm, I, I believe in owning some dirt to keep the planet held together. We don't want it to come apart or anything. So 
and and I like this. It's in the family. You get you got you you like it. It's in your wife's family. It's pretty cool. I like, I think it's got a cool vibe on the thing. But don't go over there and go three hundred thousand dollars in debt. Keep your four hundred thousand dollars house, and then try to figure out why you're broke. Yeah, the key we here will is all not to know. have multiple mortgages because yeah. you had this dream. Yeah, we you will all breathe. know why you're broke because you did stupid butt stuff because you got all caught up in the dream of this thing and thought it was all just going to work out. It ain't going to work out. You got to make it work out, dude. You got to force it through the mold. And uh, that means you put stuff on the other side of the scales, the inconvenient, bad stuff, living in a rental, building, waiting, something uncomfortable in order to make this happen today and keep the messiness of family out of it later. This is The Ramsey Show. We were drawn to Christian Healthcare Ministries because we both had young families and we wanted to have more children. And we had also just started a real estate company and needed to find healthcare coverage that would meet our needs. We were attracted to CHM because of its low monthly costs and the ability to negotiate medical costs down. Established in 1981 and accredited by the Better Business Bureau, CHM is here to meet the needs of your growing family or small business. Check us out at chministries.org backslash budget. We absolutely believe in it. get to do a live event in about a week not virtual not virtual real people it's like humans it's virtual means sort of kind of yeah we're not sort of kind of doing this it we're real. really freaking doing it game on it's human beings and it's going to be about two thousand of us there in las vegas we'll be there may the 5th that is next thursday for most of you and uh, we are looking forward to being there we're going to be doing one of our Building Wealth Live events. Uh, we're doing them all over the nation this spring and fall. Rachel Cruz, George Camel, and I. And we're adding Dr. John Deloney and King Coleman That's nice into the mix. And I'll uh, be discussing things that are going on in America right now. Things that are people are talking about. And how do you really build wealth in this current environment, in this current situation? Las Vegas is next week, May 5th. Two weeks later, Orlando on May the 19th. And that's followed by the Entree Leadership Summit the following week there in Orlando. We'll be down there for four days doing that. That's going to be about 3,000 folks, uh, small business leaders from all over America. A lot of fun. And then in the fall, we will be doing Sacramento November the 1st. Minneapolis, November the 10th, San Antonio, November the 15th, and we'll be adding one more city very Ooh. soon. The mystery will be unveiled. I heard today the contract is coming in. I didn't even know. So, so this uh, is news to me. We have to get the venues under contract these days before we can actually start talking about them because, well, people are just weird. I'm Plans just saying. change. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And on top of that, Smart Conference, October 22nd in Dallas. That's right. So we've That's got right. a whole we're bunch of events. over the place. George, we're going to get some work out of you. That's yeah. what I'm we'll saying. We'll get some miles, too. That's what I'm saying. Crack the whip. Tickets are $25 each for these Building Wealth live events. A four-pack, however, you can get, bring, a, you know, one of you couples, bring another couple with you that are friends. Y'all will make a great night of it. You're going to be entertained. You're going to leave inspired. You're going to know what to do to build wealth. You're not going to be under any illusions of any get-rich-quick stuff or anything like that. $60 for a four-pack. That's only 15 bucks a piece. You can't buy a pizza for that. So come out. We would love to have you. Again, Vegas, there's a few tickets left for next week. If you want to come, Orlando, just a couple. You better get them quick. May, they're just about sold out for here in May. May 5th, May 19th, and uh, the ones for next fall are already over half sold out. Wow. And so don't People wait are around. People to get out. Go, I wish I'd gotten my ticket. And go, they're not that expensive. Go get them. My goodness gracious. Yeah. RamseySolutions.com slash events is the place to go. That's exactly right. Thanks for that reminder. Blinds.com is our question of the day. Find out for yourself why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Free samples. Free shipping. New promos all the time. You save money. Use the promo code RAMSEY to get the best deal. It's magic. Today's question comes from Davin in Florida. I'm a 45-year-old single dad who has been financially irresponsible for most of my life. 
Two years ago, I became a full-time firefighter with great benefits. Now I have a deferred compensation plan, save religiously towards my son's prepaid college expenses, and I'm putting $120 a month into an index fund. My monthly expenses are my mortgage, living expenses, $600 child support, and a $200 Chapter 13 bankruptcy payment. I'm hesitant about stopping my current investments and my son's prepaid college to pay off the $10,000 of Chapter 13 debt only because I've started so late in the game. I have no other debt. Should I continue on the course I'm on, or should I stop all retirement investments and put it towards the bankruptcy debt? What an interesting predicament he's found himself in. Well, I don't see this any different than a different type of debt. I'm putting this in the debt snowball. I'm pausing all investments, and I'm going gangbusters to get rid of this debt really fast. Yeah, yeah. Da- da- Davin or Davin, however you pronounce it, the truth is when you get the debts paid off and you're out from under the Chapter 13 bankruptcy, that's going to put your financial irresponsibility and the shame associated with it in the rearview mirror. Mm. Today, you get a monthly reminder. It's like I have to write, I was a, I used to be stupid check every month. You don't want to keep doing that. You want that in your rearview mirror where grace belongs and look out the windshield towards a beautiful, bright future. What little ground you lose by stopping temporarily you're investing while you clear up the debt, you will be able to make up very quickly. Um, And I will tell you that some of the most successful people following our plans are first responders. Mm. Uh, Firemen in most areas, the way their schedules are put together, have an unbelievably fabulous opportunity for a side hustle. And a lot of them make more on their side hustles than they do, or as much as they do being a firefighter. And... um, so I know a bunch of them that build decks and paint houses and do all kinds of stuff, got great side businesses in their off days because you're, you know, you're off half the time. Uh, and then when you're on, you're on completely. So uh, you did say you're a single dad, so I don't know what that entails here in terms of being able to do the side hustle. But uh, all of that to say there's something spiritually, emotionally, psychologically uh significant about putting that bankruptcy in your rearview mirror plus you're getting out of debt so let, let's let's yeah george is exactly and that'll increase right. your cash flow on top of that on yeah, top of yeah, the spirit part mathematically you'll be able to do all your stuff you'll triple better. the money to invest yeah. instead of yeah. 100 bucks and by the way i wouldn't do prepaid college ever i would do a 529 in good mutual funds uh, you don't want to prepay a college because you might not go there and you might not go in that state and i don't know how they've got it set up and when you prepay something, your rate of return on what you have prepaid is the inflation rate of the item. College has traditionally been a 7%, 7.2% over the last 50 years is the inflation rate on tuition. And so you're making 7% on your money instead of 10 or 12% in a good mutual fund. And so you should be in a 529 good mutual funds, not in a prepaid college anyway. And on top of that, some of the states that you people are paying into your prepaid on, they are awful with money like illinois uh or did you few, cough you know, or did maybe you states say a that state? sound, sound like that illinois yeah but um yeah horrible horrible financial condition and i don't really want to park my money with this institution that is completely out of control so no don't do that good question shelby's in fort worth texas hi shelby welcome to the ramsey show hi dave and george thanks for taking my call sure what's up Hey, so I just got an opportunity to um, have a company car, and so now I'm wondering what to do with my personal car. I've got about 34000 left in student loans, and so I'm kind of inclined to sell, but... Can you drive the company car for personal use? Yes, I can. Why would you keep the other car then? Sell it. (laughs) My concern is um, if the company car has to go in for any type of, like, longer maintenance i i mean i drive the car throughout um you know the city to different jobs and homes and so if i don't have a car to drive personally if then the company you know, work. tells you to put their car in for maintenance they don't give you a replacement that is a good question i don't know i just got it that would be normal by the way <laughs> and how they... often is this okay. going in for maintenance well i mean i just got it so it's a little older with over a hundred thousand miles so it may 
see a little more frequent. Um, but the company yeah, gave I'm you a sure. company car with a hundred thousand miles on it. I'm in home health, so it backs up easily. <laughs> wow. So you're putting a lot of miles on a car. Yes. Okay. Yes. And my commute in right now is really long. Um, it's about an hour commute, but that'll be decreasing in the summer. Okay. Yeah, right. I'd sell it for top dollar, your current car, and use that thing. Okay. How big is your company? Um, you we're pretty big over the state. <laughs> I'm sorry? We're pretty big all over the state, yeah. Okay. Because they just, it's, they cheaped out on the car, and I was just curious why. Oh, I mean, I don't, I don't know. It was, it was not supposed to be a permanent thing. I was just supposed to have it for a couple months, and then it kind of turned into a long-term thing. So, I mean, I don't know how long they typically keep their cars. It could be at the, the end of its cycle. Okay. All right. And, yeah, I, I would get rid of it. You don't have any reason to pay bills on a car sitting in your driveway. You can get you, if the whole deal falls apart for whatever reason, go get you another car. If the car goes in for extended maintenance, rent a car for a short period of time. All of that will be cheaper than owning a car that's sitting in your driveway, paying tags and insurance. And in general, the thing's going down in value. It hasn't lately, but in general it is. So, yeah, I'm getting rid of it. Thanks for the call. If you're looking for ways to update your home without blowing the budget, I've got it. For years, I've been telling you about our friends at Blinds.com. Blinds.com makes it simple to shop top quality blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping. With Blinds.com, there's no need to renovate your entire home. Just change out what's on your windows with upscale choices like faux wood blinds, cellular and roller shades, or even outdoor shades. Plus, Blinds.com guarantees the perfect fit whether you do it yourself or you have them measure and install everything for you. Shop their latest looks and see how much you can save at Blinds.com today. The easy and affordable way to make your home more beautiful is Blinds.com. George Camel Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America, in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. DRC and Alan are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Hi. Hi, Dave. Hi, Welcome. so Where excited you? to meet you both. Well, you too. Where do you guys live? We're in St. Augustine, Florida. Oh, beautiful area. Very yes. cool. Welcome to Nashville. And all the way here to do a debt-free scream. How much did you pay off? 306000 Five hundred and eighty-six dollars and sixty-six cents. Love I it. Might be the nerd. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> might here. be. Might be. Yeah. And how long did this take? This took forty-two months. Okay. And your range of income during that time? We started at one hundred and ninety-four thousand and went up to two hundred and forty-seven thousand. Wow. Very cool. What do y'all do for a living? I'm a pharmacist. And I'm a painting contractor. Very good. Good. Okay. Was uh, what kind of debt was this? Was this the house? <laughs> No, <laughs> no, no. It's from a it, it was from a failed business. Mm -hmm. From a failed business. Yes. Oh, okay. Tell us the story. What happened? Yes. So actually, this is the second time we've gone through um, your baby steps. So mm -hmm. we had completely paid off everything, including the house, in 2017, mm -hmm. and we apparently did not learn our lesson hard enough. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we thought a business was different. So oh. we, we ended up um, getting some business loans and, and uh, doing a business that, that ended up failing in about a year and a half. Which is when you find out that business is not different. Yes. You business know, is not wow. different, and you need to listen to your Uncle Dave. Debt, debt <laughs> yes. is debt is debt is debt is debt. Yeah. Yes. So what kind of business was it? Yes. It was a hormone weight loss business. Okay. And yes. what happened? What caused it to fail? 
Well, we had, it was a brick and mortar, so mm-hmm. I would first advise nobody to do brick and mortar <laughs> if you can at all help it. <laughs> and to, um, like, we really had a marketing um, issue, so lots of expense, and then mm-hmm. it was hard getting people in the door. So. Okay. So not enough customers. Not enough customers, okay. yes. Cool. So do you we still have, have a paid for house? Um, no. So this is all the business debt that we, we paid off. So we still have the house left, but we okay. are keeping our expenses very, very low. So it's very, very manageable. We should be able to have that paid yeah, off. Right, in about right, right now, the house is the only debt that we yeah. have. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. And so what was this, like SBA loans or? Um, no, we had taken like the equity from an, a house that we had paid off mm-hmm. and used a lot of that. And then on top of that, we were we were trying to support the marketing. So we mm-hmm. were getting a bunch of different um, loans and credit cards for that. So. Okay. All right. Yeah. Cool. So the thing crashes, you close it up, and then you go, okay, now i got to clean this up. Yes. yes. And that was 42 months ago. Yes. 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 Wow. So we were... That's a hard debt to pay off emotionally. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's one thing to go buy something stupid at the store and then have that on a credit card, but uh, the, the, the failed business breaks your heart. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, it, it just makes you beat yourself up, and now i got to pay payments on it. Oh, my gosh. It's yeah. like a... It's like paying alimony. It's awful. It's on the old marriage, you know? It's like, ugh. Absolutely. It was like one of the darkest times of life that I've ever been through. And, uh, you know, I just... It's hard. so grateful that, you know, we were able to do it together and walk through it together and and kind of make progress forward and and, um, just just grateful to be out of that dark place. Yeah. well, you guys, you guys did a lot of hustling and grinding. Okay, and so the business closed. Um, were one of you already? Were you you were already a pharmacist? I'm mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. Okay, and were you already doing painting? Yes. Okay, so you just took those and made them the full time gig and beefed it up and went on. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. All right, and then just roll up your sleeves and get after it. Yes. 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 Just we had a huge Excel. <laughs> sheet of all the little things and just took them one by one through the snowball i i give your debt snowball app a workout <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> throwing snowballs that's what it's there them. for that's awesome <laughs> yes so what was the hardest part for you guys i mean 42 months is a long time and that's a whole big pile of debt what was the hardest part i think just the emotional part of it mm-hmm. 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 you know a lot of a lot of self-doubt mm-hmm. and um, mm-hmm. you know pain yeah, sleep mm-hmm. sleepless nights yeah. and just mm-hmm. wondering if, you know, can we can we really do this? Like can we get through it? Mm-hmm. And um yeah, I mean God God willing we we were and we had we had a lot of support. Mhm. Yeah. Well, it, it, as dark as it is too, as you start approaching the light at the end of it, it gets really really super exciting. <laughs> yes. Cuz it's like I'm just about done with this crap, right? <laughs> I mean, I remember this. I remember this exact set of emotions. Yeah, every every two weeks, our our daughter would help us with the little chart that we had going. So she'd take out her little pink highlighter and help us along. So it was it was so satisfying as you see the debt snowball grow and you yeah. see you're making these like huge chunks on your debt, you know, which you never thought were possible. And so now we're seeing the glimmer, you know, on the horizon, and we see how we can flip it, and then you know that's gonna be start to be our savings and and really make some major progress here in the next couple of years. Most of us that have closed a small business, though, experienced a certain amount, if not a lot, of shame for the goof up that is associated with it. And the further you got down the debt snowball, the more that was in your rearview mirror. The thing I experienced was I was more and more and more free of not just the debt and the the, the arithmetic, but that shame was further back there. It's like, oh, that's back there. That's yeah. back there. I'm not that guy anymore. I, I learned it. I got it. It's back there. Last little bit. I got to sweep up this one more corner and we're done. Yes. But what was hard is even preparing for today. We were putting together our little like placard of saying how much we paid off and and just looking at the number. I mean, I know, you know, I know the number because I'm the nerd, but just looking at the number on the placard of how much we paid off is like, oh, it's just, you know, hits you in the gut. And it's done. But it's done. It's it done. is done. You're it is free. done. It is finished. We're here. This is our celebration. Never again. Never, Never again. 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 Never, Never again. Never again. For anything. For anything. Yeah. You. you Never you, again. Yeah. It's, this uh, lesson is now seared. That was a hot stove with a lot of zeros at yes. the end of it. Yes. Mm. Yes. Wow. Well, you guys are inspiring. And you said you had a lot of support. Who are your biggest cheerleaders? Oh, so so many support. So many people like really really helped us. We um, we um, did go through Financial Peace University. 
a couple different times and are so glad for all of the sets of families that, that went through that with us. We actually um, um, co-led it and we co-led it at Numa Life Church. So mm -hmm. just want to give a shout out to our church and also to our Ramsey Preferred coach, Heather Seymour, who yeah. has been along for, th for the ride with us. She mm -hmm. really helped us, especially with the business finances yeah. and getting that dialed in and, and the debt there. So we can't. To the point she actually comes up here and does the debt free screen yes. with you. Yes. That's yes. ultimate support right there. That's yes. awesome. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Did and I, I also want to thank um, a close friend of mine, Chris Larson, for all the support he gave me. Yeah. 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 You got to have friends in your corner when you're going through this. <sighs> it, it's a big deal. <laughs> I mean, it's a big deal. What y'all been through is is incredible. I'm I'm proud of you for work, walking through it because it's a tough tough slog. Uh, getting out of debt's one thing. Getting out of this kind of debt in this situation with all the emotions and things around it, it's um it's a big deal. Very well done. Yeah. Very 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 well done. What do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? Now you've been through from the FPU a couple times and now you did the hard stuff. What do you tell them? Oh. Well, I was gonna say the the biggest thing that I learned from going through this is from. Um, my wife and I getting on the same page and, um, you know, just coming to an agreement with every decision that we made. And, you know, we haven't had a, f even going through all of this, we haven't had a fight over finances since 2009. Right. Wow. That's a big deal. Yeah. Because all along together, we made the financial decisions. That, like, it had to be like two thumbs up or we weren't doing it. So mm -hmm. we were in it together and we fought through it together. Yeah. And you know, having your steps to really have a framework of like, okay, this is how we're going to do it. We're going to agree on this framework and we're going to solution and move forward. Love so. it. Love it. Well That's done. Awesome. We got a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires for you. That's the next chapter. Thank You're you. on your way. Thank you. I love it. And a copy of Total Money Makeover for you to give away to somebody in your FPU group or somebody you want to stir up a ruckus with. I love it. And have to say hello to Genevieve and Campbell, our kids that are at home. You got Aww. it. Very cool. Hi guys. All right, DRC and Allen, St. Augustine, Florida, three hundred and seven thousand paid off in forty-two months, making one ninety-nine to two forty-seven. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, three two, two, one. one. We're, We're debt-free. Debt yeah. Woo! Woo, 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 woo. I felt that one deep down. Yeah. That wow. Was real, real stuff going on there. Never gets old. This is The Ramsey Show. George Camel Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Jeanette is in Savannah, Georgia. Hi, Jeanette. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Thank you so much for taking my call. Sure. What's up? So my, my husband and I, I'm, I'm kind of caught between my husband and my grandmother, and I love them both so much, and I want to love them well, and I'm hoping you can give me some advice on um, We've been married for about a year. We're debt-free except for our mortgage. Um, our household income is about 90000 a year. We both work a bazillion hours of overtime. And I've been financially supporting my grandparents since before we got married. And we agreed that I'd continue to do that for them because they're on a very fixed income. Um, and that comes out to about 700 a month um, that I help to pay their rent. Um, when my grandfather passed away very suddenly in June of last year, uh, her income, of course, took a big hit because now there's just her Social Security. The plan was that when the lease is up in July, that she would move in with us to save money. And she's in the process of selling uh, a piece of commercial property that's her only asset. And we were going to use that money to buy her a permanent house that she can live in with no payment. Well, she told me yesterday that she's just not emotionally ready to move. It hurts too much even for her to look at my grandfather's things, much less 
pack them up and come stay with us with nothing in her hand but a suitcase. And she wants me to extend the lease for her. Um, my husband wants what's best for all of us financially, especially because we're expecting our first baby in July as well. Um, and he's pretty adamant that giving money to a rental company is a waste when she can live with us for, you know, just temporarily. And I'm, I'm kind of, he's correct 100% mathematically. Um, but then I've also got the emotional side of the equation from her, and I'm desperately looking for a third option. Um, do you think that I should extend the lease for her or try to convince her to stay with us or maybe just extend the lease for a few months to give the property time to sell? Um, I, I just I just don't know what would be the wise decision here. Mm. I'm sorry. That's a hard place to be. And it is. It sure is. And, and how, he's so how supportive old is she? and hardworking. Uh, she's in her mid-70s. How long has she lived in this rental? Um, about two years. I used to live, she used to live there with me before I got married and moved out. And they continued to live there after I got married. Does she attend a local church? She does. She is very active in her in her local church, and she has friends to support her and, and everything. But it, you know, they they were married for yeah, you know, over thirty years. I can't imagine yeah what she's going through, and my yeah. heart's broken for her. But at the same time, I, I want all of us to be okay. Well, um, I'm. It's just sad. Uh, the thing is this, her staying in this house for a few more months is not going to mean her heart is not broken. Right. Her her 30-year best friend is gone. Her heart's just broken. Yeah. And she's confusing that, that th this house location, which is a human thing, by the way. There's nothing wrong. She's not doing anything wrong. But um, yeah. the truth is, is that... Um, She's gonna have. She's going to deal with the grief of this situation in a location and a and a rental house she's been in for two years. Doesn't enter into the emotional part of it. It's just she's she's just wishing that this wasn't the story. And I can I can pretend I can put my hands over my ears and go la 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 la. This story is not happening if I can just stay in this house. And so it's it's kind of a form of denial, if you will. I think. Do you think I'm wrong? You know, I, I I think you're right. I think she's just having a really hard time. I would have a little more. I would I would I would agree with her a little bit more if she'd lived in this house for thirty years. You know, but it's been there two years, and so to associate that with him being gone is not as logical. Does that is that lot? Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And I I get I that she's hurting. I I and I'm not. I don't want to diminish that. And I don't think the way you've presented this, that your husband is diminishing that. I think he's just yeah, going, he's look, we, we, we've all got to deal with this, and it's just a, it, there's no good ending to this story because, you know, Grandpa's just gone, I mean, and he's just gone to heaven. And so, it, you know, it's just going to hurt. Whatever we do is going to hurt. And so, um, and how long ago did he pass again? Um, almost a year in June last year. It feels like on top of the, you know, on top of the emotions, he's looking at the facts going, well, this is, she's broke. And so without you, she doesn't have any options. And so at that point I go, okay, she lives with us for a little bit. And then we you sell this commercial property. She processes through the grief as much as she can. And maybe you can give her some tools to do that. But either way, she's going to have to get out of this thing because you can't fund her life forever. Yeah. I, I, right. I think that you're on, you know, you've got a good plan overall. Um, and um, while I, I, my heart breaks for your, your grandma, I think your husband's probably right, not from a math standpoint, but even from just loving your grandmother well standpoint, because she just needs some people to grieve with, and you being there for her, and a new baby in the house, and all that kind of stuff, it's, it's a, that's a good place for her to kind of heal and spend time with, you mm -hmm. know? And living in this rental house with the the past all around her, just isolated, is not that doesn't facilitate her.
going through the hurt and the pain of this. It doesn't facilitate her going through the grieving process. So I probably, the reason I ask about the church is if she respects her pastor, I'd probably, you know, the two of you sit, or the th- you and your husband and grandma sit down with pastor and let pastor, you know, kind of be the spiritual guide and maybe he even takes some of the lumps instead of your husband taking them because maybe he suggests that she go ahead and yeah. get out of there and get moved. Because I think that's yeah. what's best for her. Not, not, uh, you know, it also happens to be what's best for y'all, but I think it's what's best for her. Because her reasoning for staying there is to say, I'm going to pretend like this didn't happen. I want to live in the past a little while longer. That's going to make me not hurt and not walk through the process of the grief here. And, and I want her to, to uh, Dr. Deloney always says, grief demands a witness. And so when he's got, she's got you and your husband and the new baby and she's right there and, and um, you know, she's not lonely. She's not sitting there in that rental house by herself watching some stupid television thing, you know. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I think it's just best for her. Okay. Well, that, and I, I knew that I know that you're right. I know that he's right. It's just it's just so hard for me to watch her cry, you know. So yeah. I, Well, I, I, my point is, is she's really not crying it. about a rental house. Yeah. She's really crying because Grandpa's gone. Yeah. And that's okay. She's supposed to cry. I mean, I've been married 40 years. Um we plan on me dying before Sharon because I won't do well without her. <laughs> it's a it's part of the estate plan. I, I predecease her. I mean, it's just it's, it's the way we've arranged it. <laughs> as long as there's no more details about how that's going to go, yeah, then well, it gets scary. Yeah, yeah. What's Sharon planning over don't, there? Don't ask about Sharon's plans, okay? But, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Well, Jeanette, I'd love to send you a copy of John Deloney's new book, Own Your Past, Change Your Future. I'm hoping yeah. it gives you some tools, maybe some tools for Grandma. Maybe you guys can go through it together. I don't know what that looks like for you, but we'll have Kelly pick up and send you guys a copy because I think that can give her some tools, some resources to process through this very, very difficult thing. Yeah, I, I, I do think the pastor with his arm around her and you and your husband sitting there and you all praying and her crying through this decision is probably going to help her. And I don't want the end of this story to be your husband ends up being the bad guy to grandma or to you, either one, because he's not. And uh, he, he, you did not describe him as belligerent or greedy or this is not about money. Uh, and in just thinking it through it with you here on the air, it really does appear to us that it's really what's best for her emotionally psychologically. Oh, and the finances also happen to line up. This is the Ramsey Show. Dave here. You can find all of our shows with the Ramsey Network app on your smartphone. It's the only place to listen to the entire back catalog of episodes. Download the Ramsey Network app in your favorite app store today. This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's The Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. This is the show where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create real and amazing relationships. George Campbell, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host this hour. This is a Baby Steps Millionaire theme hour. Thank you for joining us, America. We're so glad you're here. We're going to be talking with real millionaires this year, people who really are millionaires, not your broke brother-in-law with an opinion. We're asking how you really did it, what really happened. Now, a millionaire is not someone that makes a million dollars a year, George. A millionaire is someone with a million-dollar net worth. What you own minus what you owe. It's a simple formula. Equals a million dollars or more than you're a millionaire. That is your net worth. There's not multiple definitions. He's a net worth millionaire. 
that's redundant. There's only one type of millionaire, and that is a net worth millionaire. Someone who earns an income of a million dollars or more is not a millionaire by any definition. This is an accounting term. It is a financial planning term. It is not a societal commentary. It is not a moral construct. And so you don't get to freaking change it. It's just this is what a millionaire is, and this is the only way you get to be a millionaire. You have a million. What you own minus what you owe is in excess of a million dollars. It doesn't matter if it creates an income or not. You can have a family farm that just sits, and it's just dirt. And it's worth $2 million, and that's all you have. Then you're worth $2 million because you can sell it for $2 million, hypothetically. So there you go. So anybody that has a million dollars, we want to talk to you this hour because we want to find out what you did and how you did it. Did you win the lottery? Did you inherit the money? Uh, are you a famous rock star? Uh, did you, um, I don't know, some other bizarre thing that people believe that doesn't ever really happen? These are percentage-wise never occur. But if you're any of those, that's wonderful. We'd love to talk to you. However you got your million, we want to hear your story to tell people how they can do it. Open phones at 888-825-5225. We're talking with real millionaires. Mike's going to start us off in California. Mike, what's your net worth? Dave, thank you for having me. Um, $2.6 million. Oh, very good. Okay, cool. And um, very good. And, and so break that down for me. What's the mix on it? The mix is um, 1.4, and that's a combination about um, 80% 401k and 20% Roth. Okay, so 1.4 in retirement. All right, and the other uh, 1.2 is the is my home. Your your, your home is worth 1.2. Exactly. I okay. paid that off um, two weeks ago. Oh, good for you. Very good. Yeah. Okay. How old are thanks, you? Thanks. Thanks. Thanks to you, Dave. Sixty. 60. Well, I didn't pay it. You did. Way to go. How much of the uh, uh, 2.6 million that you have did you inherit? Uh, zero. Zero. Okay, cool. And uh, what was your best year household income since you've been working and your worst year household income since you've been working? Uh, 50 to uh, over um, 200K. Cool. What do you do for a living? Uh, both my wife and I are in sales. Uh, she's in uh, food distribution, and I'm in IT. Cool. Uh, you got a four-year degree? Um, high school, yes. A high school degree. Okay, cool. Do you oh, remember your GPA? 3.3, um, and my wife was 3.8. Okay, cool. Good, good. She's a she's a smart one. Ah, I got you. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> she picked you. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right. So. Uh, do you use an investment professional, or do you do all this yourself? Uh, yeah, we started to, uh, of course, you know, through our whole venture through um, FPU, and and yeah, once once we went through all that, Dave, yes, we got our uh, financial advisor and, and set up our trust and everything. So we we followed your plan. Awesome, Mike. I'm curious, was this a goal of yours, or did it just kind of happen? Like, no, oh, I've look, been oh, a big, big day fan. I've been a big day fan for. A, 15 years i've been doing davish so would you say um, this is a 15 year journey that you've kind of set out on intentionally well for myself and then to my wife you know jumped on board um you know about eight, seven years ago and we and and it, it's it helps it helps the marriage it helps communication and we just um we just went after it and we focus on the house and and we did it wow very good good for you man i'm proud of you how's it feel Awesome. I mean, it's it's freedom, and yeah. So we were thinking, well, you know, what are we going to do now? <laughs> and that's it's it's exciting to see where we're going to move forward. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Good for you. Good and I want to, you know, Dave. I wanted to give a shout out to my wife. I love her. She's she's on the road. She wanted to be here. Um, we're just big fans, and I just wanted to tell her I love her. Well, that's very cool. That's the way it works, man. Well done, yep. rock star well couple. Done. Okay, now. You're 60 years old. You have yep. a $2.6 million net worth. You make $200,000 a year household income. You live in California. If someone's out there listening that's 22, can they still do what you did? Uh, for sure. I think my, my son is a good example, you know, with, you know, if he, he knows, knows the value of, of a dollar. And if you want to um, buy something, you save for it and you buy it. Um, it drives used cars, <laughs> and image is overrated. Um, 
yeah, just live your life. Who cares about whatever, what anybody else thinks? Mm, very well done. Hey, brother, we're proud of you. Congratulations. Another Baby Steps millionaire out there. After the name, That's what we named the book after was these guys just like Mike and his wife, how ordinary people built extraordinary wealth and how you can too. See, the misnomer, George, is that everyone inherited their wealth. That that's they don't the, deserve it. That's the biggest lie. That's the biggest lie. Well, it also infers that if you don't have a rich uncle, you're screwed. And what Mike is saying is you're not. You can do this. You can get out. You can get out of debt. You can live on less than you make. You don't worry about image, and you put money away. And ta-da. But it's easier to get mad at rich people, Dave, than it is to do the work. That's the truth. Well, it is, but it's not as effective. And it doesn't get you what you want to get. And if you believe a lie, you will then function in that lie. And that's how we started doing this theme hour is, uh, and and then we ended up doing the largest study of millionaires that has ever been done in North America. Over 10,167 of them studied. And we asked them in great detail what their, um, you know, what their process was, who they are. We found that 79% inherited precisely zero that 5% inherited a very small amount, like $5,000 from the grandmother or something like that, and another 5% inherited good money, big money, like 100000 bucks or something, but after they were already millionaires. And so that 5 plus 5 plus 79 gives you the number of 89% of America's millionaires are not that because of inheritance. It's a big deal, George. Yeah, it's because of intentionality, consistency. Over time, 94% said they live on less than they make. It's that simple. Wow. If you just do that, you will be wealthy. What a concept. Yeah. Maybe they should run for Congress. I don't think they'll make it through. Live on less than you make. Hmm. A concept Congress can't grasp. This is The Ramsey Show. your house right now it can be overwhelming but you don't have to sell your home alone you need an endorsed local provider by your side our elps are ramsey trusted that means they're highly vetted they're top tier real estate agents that my team and i trust they're pros who are excited to serve you and help you sell your home at the right price if you're ready to get a home sold to get with a ramsey trusted elp in your corner and uh, it's free to connect of course just go to RamseySolutions.com slash agent. You can find one near you. RamseySolutions.com slash agent. It's a Baby Steps Millionaires theme hour. My latest number one best-selling book, Baby Steps Millionaires, How Ordinary People Build Extraordinary Wealth, How You Can Too. Maggie is with us in St. Louis. Hey, Maggie, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's your net worth? Uh, my husband and I, our net worth is $1.2 million. Okay. Give me a little breakdown on that. How much retirement, how much house, and so on? Uh, we have about 575000 in Roth, uh, almost 100000 in traditional, so about six to 700000 in retirement. We have 425000 in equity on our house, about 50000 sitting in a savings account, and college uh, savings and other assets are about 40000 Cool. How old are you guys? We, I am 39. Our goal was to be millionaires by the time we were 40, and I met that at the end of my 37th year. So you made it! Amazing. We made it! I love it. How much of this $1.2 million did you guys inherit? You know, we did not inherit any of it. In fact, when we found you in 2007, we were $575,000 in debt. Whoa! Wow. So, yeah. This is a and turnaround. Actually, I had talked to you. I had talked to you in 2007 when we first started. I called into the show. Was I nice to you? 
no. <laughs> you ended this show. You ended this my call with ah, oh, what a mess. And it, it wasn't a mess. <laughs> it's been known to happen, and here you are, two million dollars later, it's five seventy five negative to one point two positive. I love it. Yes. So, what is yes. your range of income in your working life? Your best year ever and your worst year ever. Our worst year was about a hundred thousand together. Our best, which only happened one year, was three hundred and twenty five. What We've do you guys do? What's your career? We are both pharmacists. Ah, very good. Okay. Explains yeah. the debt. Yes, it does. 300000 in debt. <laughs> ah, got it. Okay. And yeah. so uh, your degree is obviously in pharmacy. What was your GPA? <laughs> uh, mine was pretty high. I was uh, 3.9. My husband was about a 2.8. Oh. So. Oh. Yep. Just like yeah, that. Yeah, but he's still, he, 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 yep, yep. <laughs> so they, they really don't care about that. Once you get into the real world, they care about your ability to work and yeah. uh, your hard work. <laughs> did, you, did you count the pills in that bottle correctly? That's all they care about. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Incredible. Very well done. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. So what do you tell people? Can they still do this? They absolutely can do this. There is hope. Um, even if the Dave Ramsey says that your finances are a mess, that there's still hope. <laughs> That's the best part. I mean, you guys had, in over 15 years, you had almost a $2 million turnaround. What do you attribute yeah. that to? Obviously, you guys had a great income, but you guys are really intentional. Um, yeah, we were. I think in the beginning, before we had kids, we were living about 20% of our income and tithing 10%, and then um, putting 70% into um, trying to get out of debt was mainly... Um, but good communication. Like, I just think, you know, when we started, my husband wasn't super interested in it. The only reason he want, he went to a Dave Ramsey class was because we were new to the area and he wanted to meet people. But after, after listening to one, uh, the first lesson, he was hooked. Um, but just like good communication, I think was a thing and the ability to just make it fun throughout the process and have goals. Yeah. And we definitely made a ton of mistakes well, <laughs> along the way. I'm wow. telling you, I'm I'm so. proud of you guys. What you've done is very intense. I mean, you, you're millionaires by the time you're 40, and you overcame a $575,000 debt hole. Very wow. impressive. So um, the opposite end of the story, the first time I talked to you, I said, it, uh, what a mess. Now I'm saying, what a champion. Mm, what, I like that. What an amazing, what an amazing couple of people. Very well yeah, done. Yeah, that's incredible. Very well Inspiring. done. Inspiring. All right, Nick is with us in Connecticut. Hi, Nick. Uh, what's your net worth? Hi, Dave. My net worth is $1.5 million. Cool. Very good. Uh, how old are you? Uh, 33. Oh, wow. Young millionaire. Give me a little breakdown on that uh, 1.5 between retirement house and whatever else it's in. Okay. Uh, 1.5, uh, yeah, sorry, 150000 home equity, 50000 in other equity, one. Uh, 150000 in a uh, an IRA, a traditional IRA, and my proud claim of $1.15 million in a Roth IRA. Wow. Big Roth. You've been kicking it at 33 to get it to that point. Very good. So how much of this money did you inherit? Not a dime. Zero. And what's your best working year and your worst working year since you've been working? Uh, with, yeah, with my wife, it's about seventy five k and... Uh, lowest and highest, 120. Okay, cool. What do y'all? What do you do for a living? Uh, I'm between jobs. I'm looking to get into banking and investing, and my wife manages a an IT team. Cool. You got a four year degree? I do not. Okay. Does she? Yes. yes. In in what? Uh, uh, psychology. Okay. Cool. Very good. All right. And uh, good. Good for you. Okay, so how do you do this by 33 years old, dude? You loaded this thing up. This is impressive. Uh, honestly, I got a bit lucky. Like I said, I've been uh, my passion's been in investing. Um, I know I guys have to disclose that I was I am a reformed. I'm going to self self called degenerate. Um, I got involved with Wall Street bets, hit GameStop really big, got out, and I am in mutual funds and ETFs now. Whoa! So you cash the chips off the table before you took the hit. Exactly. So this yeah. all happened very recently. Yeah, this was in January of 2021. So what yeah. was your net worth before that? <laughs> uh, 55k. Oh my goodness, that's quite the jump from 55k wow. net worth to 1.5 million. 
and uh, yeah. you took some risks. But if you had this not, time if you had off. not taken the chips off the table, you'd almost be back there, wouldn't you? Something like that. But yeah, no. I when the time was right, getting out, getting good, and putting it somewhere safe. Yeah, your timing, your timing was impeccable. Very well done. Good for you, man. I'm proud that's for a, that's you. That's a needle in a haystack kind of story. Woo! I'm proud for you, though. It's, yeah. a, it's a good thing to – I like talking to somebody that did it. That's good. And uh, yeah, the, the trick – because most people don't have the uh, – they, they get they get lured by the siren song of the success, and they stay in, and they end up riding the same horse until it dies uh, instead of getting out at the top. And you were smart enough, wise enough to get out at the top and realizing that this is not a forever play. So, well done. At least I guess that's what happened. Is that what happened? Yeah. Uh, January 28th, uh, 2021 will be the most stressful day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I had a, a million-dollar loss in unrealized gains. And then the, ne- the next day, we sold it at the, the top. Wow. Wow. Amazing. Wow. Good hard for to, you. Hard to replicate. Wouldn't recommend it to to yeah. our listeners, it's but not, it's not a method that works very often. But it got you got it done. So that's what we we take the calls from. However you did it, and we want to hear the true story. So good for you, man. I'm proud of you. Open phones at triple eight eight two five five two two five. So I'm talking to some young millionaires today: a sixty, a thirty nine, a thirty three. Wow. Well, everybody that's rich are crooks, greedy rich people, greedy rich people. No. I hadn't talked to any of those today. None of these people stole their money. None of them did anything illegal. Wow. No drug deals here. Just hard work. Not that we're aware of. <laughs> Not that they're willing to tell us. Not that was admitted to here on the air. Yeah. And we haven't talked to anybody who had a um, number one best-selling record. Yeah. I no. said most of them hit millionaire status at age 49 in our study. And if you took the average here, I think you'd find something similar. Yeah, the average is about 49 of those three right there. Very interesting. We'll talk to some more millionaires right here on a Baby Steps Millionaire theme hour. Steps Millionaires theme hour here on the Ramsey Show. We talk to real millionaires and find out how they really did it, not so what someone's political opinion is or people with uh, their expertise coming from Twitter, uh, which would by definition be an oxymoron. So expertise from Twitter is an oxymoron. Was the keyword moron in that sentence, Dave? <laughs> could be. Okay. Could be. Yeah, there's a real keyword. George Camel, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. As we talk to millionaires, Rob is in Omaha, Nebraska. Rob, what is your net worth? Hi, Dave. Hey, George. My net worth is $1.2 million. Cool. Give me a little breakdown on that by category. Sure. We have a paid-for house, uh, 255000 cash, 170000 emergency fund, 32000 22,000 in HSA, uh, 129,000 in some other equities, uh, 540,000 in retirement, uh, and then you know the rest is in a 529. Very good. How old are you? I am 35. My wife is 34. Excellent. How much of this 1.2 million did you inherit? Zero. Okay. And what's your best working year of your working lifetime, household income, and worst working year? This year is slated to be the best. Uh, our base will be somewhere around 330, potentially at the 372, uh, depending on how bonuses pay out. Early on when we got married, it was 45,000. Cool. What do y'all do for a living? I am in IT security and risk management, and my wife is in accounts payable and is also a real estate agent. Wow, you guys are killing it. This is great. 
So what's your degree in? I have a bachelor's in MIS and computer science and an MBA, and my wife has a bachelor's in business administration and entrepreneurship. Wow. What's your GPA when you were in school? Uh, I was a 3.8 both for undergrad and graduate, and my wife was 3.8. Okay, good. Cool. Okay, well done. You did this quick, man. 35 years old. Proud of you. So uh, can this still be done if you're 25 listening to this? Absolutely. It can be done earlier if you start earlier, too. That's what we kick ourselves about. The, the biggest mistake was not, not doing it earlier. Wow. How old were you guys when you started this? Uh, when we really uh, got focused, uh, you know, stumbled across uh, the Ramsey uh, team, it was our late 20s, probably 26, 27. And then when we, we just got focused and got to it. So in under 10 years. You were able to accomplish this. That's amazing because a lot of people think in their minds, well, yeah, I'll get there when I'm 65. I don't want to wait that long. But it doesn't take that long when you're intentional. Yeah, the average is 17 years. You guys did this really fast, but you have a way above average income, so you were killing it. So that's pretty cool. Well done, man. Very, very well done. All right. What do you tell people the secret to becoming a millionaire is? You have to know your your why, and you have to set your sights on a goal, Uh, Both my wife and I want the ability to control time, you know, to to do what you want, when you want, where you want it, as long as you have the ability to separate yourself from the system and not have to make a payment to another. That gives you the ability to spend your time to find what what gives you that true level of happiness, and no no stuff can offer that. Mm, A lot of wisdom there. That's pretty profound. Wow. Separate yourself from the system. I love that. Stick it to the man. (laughs) I love it. Absolutely. That's very cool. Very good. Hey, man, we're very proud of you. Congratulations. Very well done, Rob. Sean is next. Sean's in Louisville, Kentucky. Sean, what's your net worth? I'm right at a million dollars, Dave. Look at you. And uh, how old are you? I'm 33 years old. Bunch of young ones today. All right, good. Okay, I love it. So give me a little breakdown on your million dollars. How's that broken down by category? Yeah, so I have a paid-off house right at a half million dollars. I own some other real estate property at 200000 Um Have a Roth IRA at about 200000 and the rest is in, in uh, cash. Good for you. And what's your best year working income, worst year working income since you started? Well, I I vary a lot on my salary. I'm I'm in sales, and so best year was right at half a million dollars. That was a few years ago, and then, uh, but when I started in my industry, I was started in help desk, and so I was making minimum wage right at about eight dollars an hour, and just worked my way up in the industry, and and now I I lead a sales team. Okay, what do you sell? Uh, so I sell IT SaaS software. Okay, excellent. All right, very cool. Yeah, that's that's making a lot of sense. What, do you have a degree? Uh, I actually have a degree in biblical and theological studies and a master's in pastoral counseling. So wow. I got into the industry to pay my way through school, and next thing I knew, I had uh, had kids uh, and uh, made a career out of it. Love it. What was your GPA when you were in school? Uh, Three point eight five is what I averaged. Golly. Okay. Good. Good. Okay, so you've made a lot of money, and that's part of the what has contributed to this. You've had some really good years. What else do you co- uh, attribute this level of success at 33 years old to? Well, Dave, I've during that time I've had a lot of hard years, and so a big portion of it was just always staying out of debt, um, especially early. You know, when I was pulling in twenty, thirty thousand dollars a year. Um, you know, if a car breaks down, it could have been one thing that would have set you back and it would have been very hard to survive. So just, you know, always having that emergency fund, um, living within your means, um, but also being proactive with my savings. So I'm very much the type that, uh, if I have to do something, I tend not to do it because I just get busy. And so within my savings, I was having it automatically pulled out. I was maxing, uh, out my 401ks. And so I just didn't need to think about my savings plans. Yeah, yeah. You was, just get after it. Was this instilled in you from parents? Where did all this come from? This mindset. It, it very much was my dad. He, you know, he kind of taught me the power of compound interest, 
um, at a young age, and he would tell me, you know, the math problems that if you save starting young, what it would be worth when you were older. And uh, so he talked that through with me and uh, also taught me the lessons that he learned, you know, with um, with making different financial decisions, one of which was never buying a new car. So he always bought a car with 50,000 miles on it. And right now I'm driving a truck with 198,000 miles on it. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> well done. Well done. I love it. Well, congratulations, brother. We're very, very, very proud of you. So you're, the moral of the story for you is it still can be done. It absolutely can. And, you know, I also had a – I went unfortunately went through a divorce, which was the hardest time, and so I lost in the middle of that, lost half my assets mm. uh, within that. And, you know, just being out of debt is what made me survive. It just took that stress off of me. Yeah. Wow. And still come back at 33 with a million-dollar net worth. Pretty amazing. Well, well done, sir. Thank you for sharing your story. This is uh, – this is how it's done. So, George, we've been doing these uh, millionaire theme hours, Baby Steps millionaire theme hours for several years now. Um, the number of times that um, someone calls in and says that they are a millionaire because they inherited it, and which, by the way, there's no shame in that. I do remember precisely one guy calling in, and he's like, yeah. I mean, Mom and Dad followed your stuff. Uh, they had $10 million when they died. They left us each $3 million. And um, my, no shame in that. Yeah. And he's like, legacy. the way I'm going to honor their memory is I'm going to do the same stuff they did. I'm going to stay out of debt and I'm going to invest steadily. And so, uh, hey, we don't throw any sh shade on that at all. We'll go with it. You know, that, that's that's a wonderful story. That's a legacy story. Yeah. But the number of times that happens is very low. Almost all of the people have zero inheritance or very close to zero inheritance, such a small inheritance that it didn't matter. You know, sometimes they'll joke and say, well, my grandmother left me an old car, you know, or something like that. But most of the time, uh, the thing they got from their parents was work ethic. Mm. Um, maybe they got from their parents an example of what not to do. Yeah, that can but, be a strong but, why but, as well. Either way, they, they did not have an inheritance, and they end up millionaires. We're talking to real millionaires this hour. It's a Baby Steps Millionaires theme hour here on The Ramsey Show. Scripture of the day, Luke 14, 28. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you sit down first and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? Stephen Covey said, make time for planning. Wars are won in the general's tent. Ooh, there you go. I like that. It's a millionaire theme hour, a baby steps millionaire theme hour here on the Ramsey Show. George Camel, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. The lies that are out there about the wealthy are this, that they all inherited their wealth. 89% did not become millionaires, according to actual research, not someone's political opinion. Well, the wealthy are all crooks. Nope. There's a percentage of the wealthy that are crooks, and there's a percentage of poor people that are crooks. As a matter of fact, there's just a percentage of people that are crooks. And it actually runs about the same, really, when you really get down to it. Uh, you know, when a rich person is a crook, it just, it, it's it's with more scale. It's easier to hate on. Yeah. Well, and it's, you know, but it, they're, they're actually crooks. They just do it. I mean, Bernie made off. They do it with scale, right? More zeros on it. Yeah. And uh, so it's, it's more, you know, it's a bigger flash when it happens. And so uh, most millionaires, most wealthy people are famous entertainers, famous athletes, Rock stars, actors, no. 
Less than 1% of wealthy people are people of notoriety, people of note that you would know their name. They're not household names. So there's wealthy people out there like that. They're, you know, they're the, the and sometimes they're crazier than a bean, you know, if they're in some of the entertainment stuff that's out there. And sometimes they're regular folks if they're in some of the entertainment stuff that's out there. But um, the wealth isn't what did it. It's just that they were crazier than a bean and they got some money. And so we noticed them. And uh, they can do crazy on steroids. You've they can, met some of those people, and some of them are broke. Man, we have. We've met some interesting ones. Uh, they're all uh, wealthy people. I can't be wealthy because all wealthy people are brilliant. They're all the 4.0. Nope. Haven't talked to one today that got a 4.0. Um, they're not dumb. They're not a 1.0. They didn't get a degree in beer pong. But, uh, but they're usually around a 3 Somewhere a three percent or yeah. a, a three uh, point something GPA is what all of them today have been anyway, and that's about right. That's what we normally are. Occasionally run into a four point oh, but well, you don't have to be. You don't. You, too. you do have to be. I mean, smart, but you know, versus dumb. But but you don't have to be brilliant, inordinately brilliant to build wealth. Um, you just have to be smart enough to keep doing your four hundred one k and get your house paid off, and that's generally what causes people to become millionaires, right there. Gabriel is with us in. Clarksville, Tennessee. Gabriel, what's your net worth? It's about one point two million. Good for you. Well done. And uh, give me a little breakdown on that by category, please. Um, I have uh, two IRAs, two, one for my wife and one for me. Uh, How much is in those? Uh, brokerage account. Those. Um, it's a little. It's about two two twenty. Okay. Cool. Five. Cool. And right. then uh, uh, a brokerage account. And that's got about uh, three hundred thousand in it. Gotcha. And then my house is worth uh, uh, three hundred and thirty thousand. Good. And then I have a, a not a mutual fund, a, um, a money market account that's got about two hundred and fifty thousand in it. Mm-hmm. And then the last category is I paid for my kid's college, which came out to one hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars, and he is an investment now. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Very good. Very good. How old are you? I am fifty-five. Perfect. Okay, cool. How much of this $1.2 million did you inherit? None. Zero. All right, and your best working year and worst working year household income? Uh, best working year was uh, I retired from the Army, but um, uh, it was one hundred twenty k a year. And worst working year, I guess, when I was a private, you know, making, I guess, you know, less than ten grand a month. Okay. Or less than $1,000 a month. <laughs> right. Gotcha. Okay. So your career was military. Thank you for your service. You're welcome. All right. You have a four-year degree? I do. I have a master's as well. Okay. Master's in what? Uh, MBA. Oh, good. Okay, good. And what was your GPA? I think 3.7 on the master's, and then my uh, bachelor's was like a 3.3. Yeah, people always get a little more serious on the master's. Okay, good. Good for you, man. (laughs) Well done. A little more application of self. Yeah, good. Okay, so you're 55 years old. You're talking to a young private that's 23, making no money. You can't be a millionaire. Is he right if he says that? Nope. What should he do? He should follow the baby steps and get on a budget. I know for me, that that budget thing was hard when we first started doing this uh, 14 years ago, I want to say. And... um. And not that we were in a lot of debt, but we would just spend money like crazy. And we owned two houses with two mortgages, and we moved. And so now it became um, long, long, dis- you know, long distance uh, real estate, which worked out for me. Uh, but in 2008, with the housing market crashing, I got upset that the um, uh, the CEOs of uh, banks were still getting bonuses. Uh, for that, and, and I, you know, me and my wife were like, we got to get you know, rid of these mortgages instead of them getting them to bonus. Why don't we get the bonus? And then I <laughs> ran into a billboard that had your face on it in uh, Greenville, South Carolina. I was teaching ROTC at Furman University at the time. Yeah. And I'm like, I got to listen to this guy. And you were on TV back then. Mm-hmm. And um, and we started the budget. The first one was very difficult. And now we come out pretty even. You know, we still do a budget every month. <laughs> And um, and it took us. We had a five-year plan to pay the houses off. I got promoted, and then I got deployed, which you know, in turn created more money coming in. 
And so that five-year plan turned into a four-year plan and, um, and having looked back ever since. And then, you know, we, re- we readjusted, um, you know, how much we were investing because we were all over the map. You know, we were investing, we were paying mortgages, we were buying stuff we shouldn't have bought. Uh, you got focused. Now we're much better. Hmm? You got focused. You were doing a lot of yes. different things, and you went, let's just focus on this one path, the baby steps, and it yes. worked. And you, and you, did, worked. you oh, still yeah. do a budget because that's how you stay a millionaire. Yeah. Live on less <laughs> yeah. than you make. Yep. That's awesome. What kind of car do you drive? I have uh, a RAV4 and a Toyota Camry. What years are they? The RAV is a 2017, and the Camry's 2016. And of course, I bought them both used. <laughs> Of course. There you go. If you want to know what a millionaire drives, it's probably more like that than it is the sports car next to you when you're driving. Unless you're driving next to Dave, and then you can, uh, you, you, you'll, you'll know you're driving next to a millionaire. <laughs> well done, Gabriel. Proud of you, man. Awesome. And, uh, again, thanks for your service. That's beautiful, yes. beautiful work. Excellent, excellent job. Good stuff. So, guys, wow. this is how it's done. Uh, the point of this hour is to give you real facts that give you hope. Because if you believe that I can't be a millionaire because everybody inherits their wealth, then you believe a lie, and we want to disperse that. If you believe I can't be a millionaire because the only way to become wealthy is to be crooked and steal, I want to disperse that because most of the people we talk to are not crooks. Matter of fact, all of them we talk to are not crooks. And, uh, you know, if you believe you have to get a 4.0, I want to disperse that. I want, I want, I want to dispense with these lies, this mythology because it steals your hope. And these people out here that are spreading this crap are hope stealers. Yeah. You just have to do what actual millionaires do, which is have integrity, work hard, do something logical and consistent over a period of time, and you'll get there. And it may not be tomorrow, but, I mean, looking at these facts, you go, okay, well, 10 years from now, I could have a huge turnaround. 15 years from now, what could life be like? 20 years from now, what, where could we be? So you've got to have that long-term vision. And a lot of them mentioned that vision they had for their life, whether it's a debt-free scream or millionaire status. You've got to have that vision. You've got to do a budget. You've got to live on less than you make. None of it's rocket science. Today they were young, 60, 39, 33, 35, 33, and 55. Wow. Yeah. Sometimes we talk to 75-year-old ones, and sometimes we talk to 65-year-old ones, but, and there's nothing wrong with any of it. Wherever you are is where you are. The trick is we want you to get about the business of winning. And don't believe these hope stealers that are out there spreading lies. That puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. Do you love a good Dave rant? Want to see the latest Ramsey Show videos going viral? Check out your favorite moments from The Ramsey Show on YouTube. Go watch and subscribe to The Ramsey Show channel on YouTube.